Being a YouTuber for the past 10 years has allowed every inch of my private life to be seen on YouTube. Turning my home into an indoor water park, surprising people with cars, money, and even retiring my parents might seem like an awful lot of harmless fun. But there's some secrets that I've kept from you that will absolutely blow your mind. Yes, you heard me right. Secrets. I kept these away from you to keep you smiling. My channel is all about positive vibes, and well, seeing my dad come close to death because of a YouTube stunt might not have put a smile on your face. In this video, I'll be revealing five of the craziest secrets behind some of my most viral videos. From never before seen footage to untold stories, get ready to witness a side of me that you've never seen before. Get ready to see Faze Rug uncensored. Number one, trapped in a haunted tunnel. Oh my god, you gotta start this one, bro. The haunted tunnel. Bro, I, I don't want to hear those words. I can't believe we're finally good to talk about this now. There's so much about the haunted tunnel that we haven't talked about, but this, this one, this one is in not. specific is nuts. This was only our second time entering that tunnel. We wouldn't be here today. If, That's if one part. thing went different that day, we wouldn't be here right now. So we went to the tunnel for the first time. What's happening, guys? Wait, are we really gonna do this? We are. All right, let's do this. You could literally see through the whole thing. Look. Just go. Just go. After about an hour into our first trip, we hear what seemed like a satanic ritual in the deep darkness. Did you hear that? Anthony, did you hear that? Brian, what the f It was coming towards us. Let's go. Anthony, let's get out of here. Made it out alive, made a banger video. Terrifying. Of course, people want a part two. We were very hesitant on it because the first time was scary. No, you weren't. I was. Okay. The amount of times, you guys all know this too, of me saying, this is the last time we're going to the tunnel. I went like a hundred times after. The second time we went, I was saying my final goodbyes to my family. My mom was begging me not to go before that, but I'm like, hey, like I just gotta do it. I didn't tell anybody I was going. Okay. Your mom used to call me and tell me like, please don't, don't take, take there. Anthony yeah. to the tunnel, please. We were this close from never being seen again from that time. Dude, stop. What's up, man? Again. Oh, no. Anthony's boots, they're so funny. They look so funny. <laughs> We're about to go in. I just got 10 times more scared right now. Anthony, we're not going in there. We gotta spray ourselves. I'll go for you. Oh. Hey, no, there's no way. No oxygen, bro. It gets thick when you start walking like 30 minutes in. You start like, you try to drag a breath, but it's like you're breathing through a straw. Almost. Exactly. Can't wait to just breathe fresh air when we get out of here. I mean, if we get out of here. <laughs> we wanted to obviously go further than the first because the video would just be the same. So we tried pushing our limits and tried going to the very end of this tunnel. Passing by multiple twists and turns with the hopes of reaching the end, if there even is one. Phase rug, Brian. Don't do that. Okay, bro. I actually thought you were. I saw you were serious. I heard the click. Wait, holy shit. stop, dude, stop. Their spray paint ran out. Just, just think about that. A tunnel with only one entrance. No one knows where the exit is. Exactly. We don't know if it travels to freaking Canada. We tried finding that out. We had no idea how far we had to go. We've never been to the end before. You also lose track of time. You have no idea if it's daytime or nighttime outside. Sometimes we'll go in the middle of the day, come out and it's just pitch black. Completely dark. dark. And another thing that's important to know is you have zero service in the tunnel. Nothing. Oh my gosh. I'll, I can't forget this. Scariest thing. I hate talking about it. I get anxiety when I I get the worst anxiety, bro. To and we've been through crazy stuff. So we're walking in the tunnel every like 10 minutes. There's a thing at the top that you can escape from with a, a ladder. Gutter. Every third one is big enough to escape from. Oh, there, oh my God, wait. I, don't, I think it's this tunnel. Brian goes, bro, we haven't seen one in like 40 minutes. It's like we were walking and seeing the same thing, like as yeah. if we were trapped in some a like- circus, bro. It, it, like a dream, it was a dream. And I remember like, we're talking to each other and, and it, then it just hits me. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's right. We haven't seen that like exit. So we're talking to each other. We're also recording. We realize we run out of water. I'm thirsty, bro. When you're breathing that heavy, like almost toxic air, it is. you toxic. just want to drink something. We always have water on us, only our second time so we didn't have that much water we try to forget about all the creepy noises Anthony. the toxic air and the water filled with unknown items possibly containing diseases the water gets deeper but we continue forward are we going through or no yeah wait this is hella deep 
Huh? If I drop my camera. No. Wait, how are we supposed Anthony, no, I don't think we should. We we're crazy. Oh my God, we're crazy. We're crazy. Now we're kind of freaking out, okay? We're in very deep. We start recording each other, we're talking, we're kind of moving around. Do you remember what happened, dude? Oh we, my uh, god. We forgot which was the front and which was the back. <laughs> So oh we don't God. even know if we're walking in the right direction. Walking back, yeah, you can make it out. Walking forward, nobody knows what's forward. We don't know where we are going. We don't know if we're ending up in a waterfall that leads to the worst thing possible. Only our imagination knew what was on the other side. There was no more graffiti on the walls. Nothing. Usually we would tell from the graffiti, like, okay, we're going in the right direction, no but graffiti. the graffiti ended no, no, no. like 40 minutes back. Yeah. So we just took a gamble. I mean, I think who made the call? You made the call, which way to go? Yeah, I just said, hey, like, I'm trusting my gut. I think we came from that direction. All we had to do was hope we were walking back towards an exit we saw 40 minutes ago. Making a mistake here could put mine and Anthony's lives at risk as going the wrong way could lead us to a days long journey, something we did not have the resources for. It was so hard to breathe. <laughs> You're good, you're good. I pulled my phone out, trying to call my mom, trying to call someone. No service, no signal, no you go water. Crazy. You really go crazy. You're hearing the same thing. It's the same exact visual image for two, three hours straight. You don't have no more water. You don't have cell phone service. Your body can't help but think of the worst. I just start thinking the what my mom is thinking. Are we gonna make it out? Are we gonna make it out? Are we gonna be on a news headline? Is anyone day? ever gonna find us? Bro, so many things are going through our mind and in that moment, like you can't panic you have to try to actually your like, body goes in that mode yeah we just were like at this point let's walk and let's hope and that's exactly what we did until we found like finally like a sewer hole to like it was so well. well thousands of spiders on the baby ladder by uh, my biggest fear spider thousands of baby spiders that should tell you how scared i was you got to overcome Drama. it you had to overcome it after hours of walking we finally find an exit the only thing that determined if we make it out alive is a tiny hole the size of a shoe box regardless we had to try to get out of there okay you turn white and do that you turn white Three, two, one. Here. I don't think he could. Oh. 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 down here alone. Can you go light? Oh my god. Can we flash it down here right away? Right away. It's dark as f***, Anthony. Guys, I'm down here alone because Anthony went through that hole. Oh my god. Okay, here. I'm coming. Oh my god, I can't see. Here's your camera. Take it if you can. Here's your camera. Yeah. And then here's mine. Go. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to pull you out. Oh Come to find out, pitch black outside. When pitch we walked black. in, it was daytime. Yep. Oh my gosh, the amount of missed calls that we my had. Phone, my mom, dude. Brandon, my dad, your parents, your sisters. The cops were called. It was the most like, when I answered my phone, it was like my mom's voice. She started crying. It Shaky. was a relief that she knew I was alive. She thought the worst happened to us. Right, Guys, we just crawled through that hole. I was down there alone. Sorry, we had no service. I didn't go your call. We just. Our parents came and picked us up. I remember they were mad, but Mom Rug came and hugged me, and my mom went and hugged you, and they were so like happy that we got out of there alive, and me and you are just idiots that were like, guys, we never believe what happened. No one knows about that, because Ryan was the YouTuber at the time. He's like, bro, we can't say this on YouTube. Yeah. I don't want people to think we're going out and harming ourselves. I didn't want to like show exactly how dangerous it was, but I'm sure people can get the gist from watching that. Yeah. But there, it was way worse off camera, and we couldn't, we didn't want to say anything. Terrifying moment. Hey, we here though. We are, dude. Let's go. <laughs> Number two, attacked at a haunted hotel. Man, this one is crazy. Scary. So this goes back over a year ago when I moved to LA, and I wanted to do a haunted video. So I called two of the best ghost hunters, Sam and Colby, who are now some of my closest friends. They came over, talking about the hotel, how it's gonna go down. This hotel was called the Glen Tavern Inn. It was in this small town called Santa Paula, and it was literally in the middle of nowhere. So it was scary as is. We pull up to the hotel. The lobby itself looked absolutely terrifying. My mistake, we get to the hotel. I post a story on Instagram of the lobby. I literally just wanted to show off that I was with Sam and Colby and we're doing a haunted video. I didn't think anything of it. We're filming this video. A lot of crazy is happening already. Yeah. Yeah, look at the. From it. Whoa. You said it too. 
Yeah. We were just getting ready to do the Estes method, which is the closer to every haunted video where we actually try to contact the spirits. We're all sitting in the hotel room. We're gathered around in a circle, sitting on the bed. And this was like to, to finalize everything. Like, okay, exactly. like, we're gonna talk to them directly. We're trying to talk to spirits. And then we start hearing, Bay's run! Coming from outside of the hotel. And the sight that we saw when we pulled the curtain, bro, there was hundreds of people outside of the hotel. And I'm not talking just standing there, shooting fireworks into the sky. Oh my God. Cars doing donuts. I don't like. Keep in mind, it's midnight. When you look down, it looked like a, a sea of ants just with flashes. People started throwing stuff at our window. Like we were literally trying to film and things were being thrown at the window because every time we look out, people saw us looking out. Uh, a lot of people from the hotel were complaining. Their manager came upstairs, kicked us out. Are you serious? Oh my God, what is that? I would understand too. If I was a guest, I would be really annoyed. This is where it gets crazy. Everything we just talked about, you guys already have knowledge of. This is something that you guys have never heard before. Man, I appreciate you though, man. <laughs> We're in the lobby. There's two cops downstairs. We look outside. There's hundreds of people outside. They know we're leaving. It felt like a stampede was about to go on. So envision this, hotel, group of people, car. I asked the cop like, hey, can you please escort us to the car? Like, I'm really scared. And they're like, unless someone physically harms you, we can't step in. It just felt like a free for all at that point. I'm Seriously. like, the cop walks us outside. And as soon as we get to the fans, he's like, go ahead, good yeah. luck. There's people screaming, going crazy. Like they were like stampeding. <laughs> I see flashes, it's very dark. Every time I blink, it's something new in front of me. People yelling my name. And then I feel someone put me in a headlock. I thought it was Noah. I look and it's like a fan. His breath reeked of alcohol. Yeah, it was bad. At that point, my head is down and I'm like looking at the person. It's like a fan and like he's a lot bigger than me. So like he, he had me like in a strong headlock and I'm just like, like trying to push him away, like pushing him. Like the cop was nowhere to be found, by the way. Like he didn't break that up or anything. I pushed the guy off. He let go, thankfully. And I'm still trying to get through, trying to get through. We finally get to Noah's car. <laughs> This is after like people were kind of like kicking Noah stuff. There was like handprints on his new car. So I felt really bad. But as we left, we got out of everything and we're like, oh my God, that was so crazy. Until we noticed cars following us. And we're not just talking like following us like at a regular speed. They were cutting us off and trying to brake check us so we could hit them and then cause an accident. Through all this, like these are streets like we were saying that are freaking dark. Like there's a lot of twists and turns. Imagine like we're already scared, it's late. And then there's like a big red truck trying to cut us off and like brake check us and Noah had to swerve a few times. We, we didn't know to, what they were gonna do. Do we have to call the cops? Like it seemed like the cops there didn't really do anything for us. So I'm like, I don't think it's serious enough. I don't even think they were trying to say what's up to us. They're they behind us. They were behind us. They were trying to like stay with us and follow us to wherever we were trying to go. I'm glad we made it out safely from that, but it was definitely one of the craziest situations we've been in. <laughs> and that right there was a lesson for me to never post exactly where I'm at, but I didn't tag a location. It's just obviously one person's like, hey, that's that hotel. The word spreads. Word of mouth from there, yeah. <sighs> Number three, the spicy gum challenge gone wrong. I never thought I would be sitting here in front of the camera telling this story, but here we are. I like to keep my content safe, but there are those moments where there's a gut feeling telling me not to do something. And this was definitely one of them. I was getting tagged in this video. Spicy gum, spicy gum, do this video, do this video. I'm known to do a lot of spicy videos on my channel because I like to push my limits. I like to test how far I can go in videos. So I immediately ordered it. How bad can it really be? It's just gum. 
Two days go by, the package arrives, I open the box. I'm just like, you know what, let's just do it. We'll be good, we'll be chilling. So Noah and I filmed throughout the entire day and the moment comes where we have to eat the gum. My dad came home, he asked what we were doing and I told him that we were doing the spicy gum. He's like, I wanna do it with you. I, I told my dad he doesn't have to do this. I wanna do it. He wants to actually try it. In my head, I'm like, I don't think this is a good idea. Not saying anything about your age, but I just know how hard these videos can be and how spicy they really are. But at the same time, my dad loves doing extreme videos. He's like, it's just gum, how bad can it be? It's a gum. Bubble gum. <laughs> Spicy though. And he's like, Brian, I wanna do it. It'll be funny. So I'm like, you know what, dad? Okay, let's do it. Were you even scared? No, because not a pepper, it's gum, you know? What can go wrong? What I witnessed after the challenge was haunting. So we unwrapped the gum. Oh my gosh, why does it look like that? Dude. Is that, is that a powder or the. Mine looks like regular bubble gum. We eat it, we chew it. The whole point of the challenge was to see who could blow a bubble in bubble. Oh! Oh god. I'm sure you remember this day. Oh. <laughs> First when we ate the gum, you know, the, the heat is start going like over my body, to my head, to my hands, leg, everything. So <coughs> I did it. Mm -mm. Yo, it's burning the <laughs> That is no joke. Anything else? Dude, it's never ending. It's never ending. Are you okay, Dad? It's just burning. Mm -hmm. It's not going away. My eyes red? Yeah. Even my dad. I did blow a little bit. He had the hose in his mouth, pouring milk all over himself. I was kind of scared for my dad as is. I was like, dude, I've never seen my dad like that. The gum, it's, it was something different. So the challenge ended and then I tried to cool off. Like I went inside like after 20, 30 minutes, feeling a little bit good, like, okay. Tell what happened, Brian. Uh, this is where things literally spiral downwards. I walk into my dad's room to check on him. Oh my gosh, this is literally giving me horrible flashbacks. But I went into my dad's room, he's laying down and he's kind of just like, oh, like, how are you feeling? He was talking, he was responsive. So I'm like, okay, like he just needs to recover, sleep it off. You know, the pain inside, you know, I just don't want to tell them I'm in pain. I don't want to scare them, you know? So I was in so much pain, but I still tell them I'm okay. Don't worry about it. And they keep asking me, Brian, like, you sure dad? You sure? I said, yeah, yeah, just, just go, you know? But then after he left the room, I think he hear me like, uh, uh, you know, like I'm starting like, he was groaning. So he came back and said, dad, you're not okay. At that moment, we're all kind of panicking, but we don't want to show it in front of my dad. And this is the craziest part. We all started searching up remedies to like cool off your stomach after eating something spicy. And we saw a lot of cures, but one that stuck out to me the most was lemon juice. Everyone from my team was there and they're like, lemon juice is gonna help, it's a savior. This is the one thing that will cure your stomach. So we grab a cup of lemon juice for my dad, not knowing what was about to happen. Papa Rug chugged the lemon juice. Not even within a like, second or less, I just about drinking the lemon juice, I put it down right away, I start screaming. Like I, I jumped from the bed, screaming, screaming, like screaming. the pain in my stomach, like someone like- Stabbing you, Stabbing right? me, like I, I start crawling, crawling to the bathroom like this, you know, I went to the bathroom and I start throwing up. Then I went to lay down in the bathroom and then the pain comes like out of nowhere again. Like I tried to throw up so much that way I can get everything out of my system, but it seems to be like the pain is not going away, the sweat and the stuff. And then I just told them immediately, call 911, that's it. I can't have it. And this is panic mode. He's pretty much screaming the whole time. And again, exactly. I've never seen my dad like that. So I start panicking. I'm like, what do we do? What do we do? So I immediately call 911. They're like giving me instructions on make sure he doesn't pass out. Make sure he's still conscious. Put his head on a pillow. Don't have him lay flat. All this while my mom is also screaming. My dad is screaming. So they said they were going to send an ambulance right away. And once they hung up that phone, my mom started bringing wet towels to put on my dad's head. I was trying to keep him up. Like my mom is like slapping his face because he was slowly like going in and out of consciousness. I was like almost crying. I'm like, dude, they need to hurry up. They need to hurry up. And this is the craziest part. I was holding my dad's hand and I feel his tight grip slowly fade like that. And he like lets go of my hand and I'm automatically assuming the worst. I'm like, I don't know if he passed out. I don't know if he fainted. And luckily the paramedics got there. They went in the room. They rushed to my dad's room. My mom's crying. I'm like hugging her and we're just waiting for them to come out and tell us something. And they walk out and they started asking me questions about the gum and I was telling them all the information, the Scoville. They bring you onto the stretcher. Were you still passed out at this moment? Well, I wake up, I think. I told them don't take me, right? Yeah, you were telling them not to take you and I'm like, they better take you to the hospital. They took him straight in the ambulance. Uh, 
I have to show him later. He's not gonna believe it. My mom and I followed behind. Right when we get to the hospital, they're not letting us go inside. Like they're like, we'll keep you updated. Stay out here and like, they're not giving us updates. Like that's what was scaring us. About 20 minutes later, we see Papa Rug stand up and then he comes out into the lobby and starts dancing. <laughs> he started dancing. I know we're laughing about it and stuff, but that was a horrific night. Like the sight that I saw of my dad on the floor, shirtless, not responding to us. I felt like I was the one to blame for it. Even though he wanted to do it, I still obviously blame myself i'm like i'm such an idiot i shouldn't have let my dad do it you. you know i always want to try stuff you know so it wasn't you it just oral of the story don't drink lemon juice if you just ate something spicy. spicy just stick to milk number four swat team raids my home so it was a normal phase rug film day that video that i filmed was wearing the world's longest acrylic nails the nails were about like this long the place that we went to they didn't really understand when i tried telling them i wanted it temporary so they actually glued them as tight as possible to my nails they were not moving whatsoever i wanted to take these off right when the video finished but that was not the case i don't think i could do this anymore but the nail salons are all closed so i can't take these off i have no choice but to sleep with them so the video's over i'm trying to take these nails off but i was in a lot of pain it's really really painful and i was actually trying to watch youtube videos on how to take the acrylic nails off it was taking too long so i decided to just figure it out the next morning and sleep with them. But little did I know that keeping these nails on were gonna put me in the most dangerous situation in my entire life. So it's about 3 a.m. and my phone is ringing like crazy. I quickly jump out of my bed and I start hearing sirens outside my house. And to make matters worse, I hear a police helicopter flying above my house saying, come outside with your hands up. They have the searchlight pointing through my window, lighting up my entire room. So I'm heading downstairs, I put my robe on, and I have these long acrylic nails. I just ha I, like, I just have them, I couldn't take them off from the video. And I'm just like, yo, do I walk out with the nails or what? So don't get me wrong, I didn't care about having the nails on. I wasn't embarrassed or anything. It's just that I've never had nails, so I didn't know how to act. So I decided to just put them in my pocket as I was walking outside. It's also three in the morning. I have my hands in my pockets, my eyes are still opening, and as I walk outside, there's lights pointed at me. Imagine you're escaping a prison, and they catch you, and all the spotlights are on you. And I'm an idiot, I had my hands in my pocket, and I walk out, and I just hear them say, hands up, hands up, hands up, and I quickly take them out like this. And I just realized that my nails are on. When I saw all the weapons pointed at me, I immediately took my hands out of my pockets, didn't even care about the nails, got on my knees, they came and put me in handcuffs, and yeah, my nails were just, they were literally this long as you guys saw after they went and searched the house they had to make sure everything was good they came outside and started talking to us and i asked what the reason for the swat call was and they said someone called in saying that i was holding my family hostage which is crazy so that's how they found out that we were youtubers because i told them why i had the long nails on and how you know we get these fake swat calls and they were all laughing about it but it was definitely a situation that i never thought i'd be in like what are the chances that i would get swatted the same night that i did the world's longest acrylic nails challenge and i couldn't take them off i just somehow couldn't take them off the night before and then in the middle of the night we get swatted so it's heartbreaking to know that the cops waste their time on stuff like that just because someone wants to be a funny jokester like you should never ever ever joke about swatting someone because you're putting someone's life at risk somebody that actually swatted a family which resulted in a death is now in jail for life like this is not a joke you can prank call pizza places and prank call your friends and stuff but just don't ever mess with the cops if you're ever in a position like that just follow what the cop tells you to do make sure your hands are seen by the cops follow their orders and if it's a prank call like that you can just explain it at the end but just don't make any sudden movements and don't walk out with your hands in your pockets number five my first ghost encounter the house i grew up in is easily looked at one of the most haunted youtuber houses on the entire platform from hearing voices a lot of footage wait hold on footsteps hey my mom just when i was going down i swear to god like almost to the last step and something just seeing shadows they had, i was like here and i saw the shadow running to the garage i swear i've seen it all in that house but it didn't just start when i became a youtuber it started back when i was a child so what you're about to hear i've never shared on youtube or shared with anyone in general 
This experience happened when I was about 12 years old and I was home alone with my brother, but sadly he's not here to share the experience with me. So try to follow along as I explain this story. Guys, tell me this is not the scariest video. I'm literally editing this right now and I'm getting the chills and I'm home alone, bro. Like I'm literally home alone. There's no one here. I keep hearing noises. Whatever, back to the video guys, sorry. So on this particular night, my mom and dad went out and they had my brother watch me. So every time we were home alone, I would always go to Brandon's room and we would watch you know basketball or scary movies we always used to watch scary movies the exorcist in particular that was our favorite scary movie out of nowhere me and brandon are just chilling and we hear a door creak open from my brother's room he has a view of the front of the house so anytime anyone would come over or pull up you could see it from my brother's room but in this situation in specific there was no car outside so my brother and i start panicking we're young so we don't even think that oh it could just be because the house is old like no we automatically assume that someone is in the house in that moment we just jumped on his bed and stared at the door in complete silence we start hearing footsteps come up the stairs one by one very slow and it's very quiet so you could hear these footsteps loud and clear we didn't say anything but we were both just hoping that it was my mom or dad trying to prank us so my brother's door was closed and the light was turned on in the hallway so you can literally see the light from under the door and the footsteps started getting louder and louder and as they were getting louder we see a black shadow walking towards the door and it stopped no more footsteps complete silence there's a black shadow standing in front of brandon's door complete silence you could hear our heartbeats that's how silent it was and this isn't even the craziest part as we're waiting for someone to just completely open the door and say ah get scared prank we just see the shadow completely walk in the opposite direction with the footsteps it walked away from the door and me and brandon are like kind of just quivering and it was one of those moments where you were so scared that you couldn't even mouth words and out of nowhere the footsteps just stopped my brother and i finally built the courage to go to the door and open it hello hello we're literally yelling in the house no answer we even thought that maybe it was one of our family members that came by, like a cousin, trying to scare us. Who the f just walked by right now? Dude, stop. I hate that we're seeing this, like, when I'm talking about this story. And we're talking about a shadow. Wait, should we, like, show, like, real quick, wow, like... What the hell was that? That reflection right there, we saw a shadow. Who was that? So me and Brandon are walking really close to each other very slowly throughout the entire house, opening doors to the rooms, turning on every single light, yelling and asking Who's if in someone's here? in the house. Nothing. No one was there. Complete silence. We quickly go back upstairs. As we're walking up the stairs to go back to Brandon's room, seems like no one's in the house. But what I'm about to tell you guys, it might sound crazy. If you have never experienced anything paranormal, I don't blame you if you don't believe what I'm about to tell you. If you have experienced paranormal, normal activity then you'll understand how crazy this is we start walking up the stairs and out of nowhere we hear my parents bed shaking like crazy and in that moment me and brandon quickly sprint and run to brandon's room and close the door we thought it was an earthquake we sprinted to brandon's room we're both screaming we shut the door and as we're in brandon's room the shaking stopped it was complete silent again brandon tried telling me that it was an earthquake there was no explanation to what we just heard. We both called my mom and dad. We had them rush home. My parents searched the house. Everything was clear. No one was there. No signs of someone breaking in. That's it. The bed shaking, we left it at, we thought there was an earthquake. The footsteps and shadows, completely unexplainable. I was too young to look deeper into this. I kind of just left it at that. But after that experience, that's when more ghost stuff started happening. And since I was a kid, I felt like there was something always attached to me, but I was too young to understand or comprehend it. But when I became a YouTuber and I started doing the Ouija board, that's when it really amplified. I truly still think that there's something attached to me because even when I do ghost videos with other ghost YouTubers, we always end up experiencing more than what they usually do. My guess is that it's because I'm there. Literally, the people who worked at the Whaley House for 20 plus years said they've never experienced that much activity. Why only when I go? Well, guys, that's the end of the video. It took a lot for me to sit here in front of the camera and explain all these stories. And let me tell you, I have a lot more. So if you guys enjoyed this type of video, please drop a like, show some love, and I'd love to do a part two in the future. Make sure you are subscribed as well. Peace out.